This is Corey Willis with PVI, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. This is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Cass from Diesel Doctor of Tennessee, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the number one diesel truck podcast on iTunes. We appreciate all the show suggestions that you guys have been giving us recently, and we've been staying busy booking guests and getting these topics on, so you're going to like episodes that are coming up. And even the one today, this was suggested by a a, a listener not long ago, and we're finally able to sit down with the owner, and we're going to be talking about swapping a 6.7 liter Cummins long block into a second gen Ram and some of the challenges that the owner faced and how he got it all up and running and working and what he thinks of the power and the performance and the towing ability of the 6.7 liter versus the modified uh, VP44 truck that he had before and, and why he didn't do the P-pump conversion to just you know get a bit more power and go through the whole build. So you guys are going to love it. Before we get to it, though, we want to let you know of a big sale. It's going on right now with Alligator Performance. They've got one with Turbo and Electronics and a ton of different ones coming up where you can save some some good money on upgrades for your truck, whether you're looking to tow a bit better, maybe replace a factory turbo that you know might be on its way out or something like that, or you know, getting your race truck ready for race season, which is coming up here. So make sure and go to alligatorperformance.com, check them out. And if you use Podcast 5 at checkout, you're going to get 5% off your order and you get a swag pack from Alligator Performance and there's some restrictions that apply with it. But if you have questions, just call the guys up or chat in or email them. Let them know. So we encourage you guys to go over there, save some money, get your truck running the way you want. All right, let's get to this podcast talking about a 6.7 liter Cummins swap into a second gen. Jimmy, it's great to have you on the Diesel Podcast today. I've been uh, following your your truck and your build on Instagram for a while now, and it's great to be able to sit down and chat with you today. For sure, Pat. Thank you. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Oh, we've been talking about it for a little bit, and it's uh, glad we finally made time to sit down and talk about it. Yeah, you caught my attention when you're like, "Hey, I got a 2001 with a six seven Cummins in it." <laughs> like, yeah, we got to talk. People have that, yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to, to have you tell our listeners a bit about the truck, say where it started before you did the six seven, and what you built it for, and then we'll get into the actual swap of the six seven into your second gen. Okay. Yeah. So. um I bought the I bought the truck back in 2011, I believe, and I was still in high school. Um, so back then, I just had the basic, you know, X comp box, four inch turbo back, all the good stuff. Um, and then I got out of high school, and uh, it was it was pretty rough, you know. It was it was definitely an Ohio truck. It was, it was rotted pretty good. So I bought a truck from Oklahoma, um, switched the body chassis, switched the body in the bed, and all the body panels and whatnot. I had it repainted. It was about a two year a two year long process. Um, redid the frame, everything, everything. 415 all, all the good stuff so that was that took uh, quite a bit of time so got it back together uh, when it was torn apart i uh i put 275 sac injectors in it um stacked the smarty on top of the fuel on top of the uh, comp box and then i put an s474 on it with a stainless diesel t4 manifold on it and then when i got back together <clears throat> i realized i really pushed my uh, limits with that turbo and I couldn't spoil to save my life. So I uh, ditched that, went to an S369 SXE with a .91 exhaust housing, I believe, still running T4. Um, and it lit, lit oh, a little better, I should say. Um, I went to the drag strip. I think it ran like a 14 some. I didn't light very well on the drag strip. Um, and then I just got fed up. I mean, well, I actually, that, that fall I put on the dyno and it made uh, 778 on fuel. And then I think 887 on a on a, a, a ghetto fog of nitrous. So that winter I decided I wanted more power, so I threw up in the air whether I should P pump it with a big P pump or just do a you know a, a common rail swap. So I tore the tore the motor out because I was I was ditching the VP44 regardless. So I uh, tore the motor out, sold that um, to a fellow in Michigan, and then uh, me and my brother were talking about it. And he had a Ford here with the, with the Cummins over the six seven Cummins in out of a 2000. And, eight or nine I believe um so I was like hey why don't we just put that in there so we tore that out I put it on my bench tore it apart um basically just like made it look nice and painted it whatnot and tore the head off it made sure it was all good put the head back on um and then I put it in and I put a 475 8710 housing I believe on it a uh, five blade stainless diesel charger um and basically, the, I was pretty late in the year. I think I didn't get a run until June or July. So I just really wanted to focus on getting running so I could drive it. So I uh, got it running, got it driving. Um, 
so I think summer of 2017, I believe I got it running and driving. Um, so yeah, I went from there, went down that road, took it to the drag strip. I think it ran like a 12, 6, 12, 7. Um, and then when I put it in, I ran into a couple of challenges. Um, I couldn't figure out for, for the life of me. I, I, I was trying to use a VP44 engine mounts. They would not line up. Nothing worked. So I said, screw it. Went to the 0809 engine mounts, and everything lined up great. I uh, got that in. I mean, honestly, everything pulled up pretty well. I just put a, a 40 RE um, adapter plate on the back to put my to my transmission. I used a uh, Firepunk anteater standalone harness for it. Um, and then the wiring harness. So the wiring harness was already in the Ford, and it was set up for key on ignition and everything. So they took the harness that went from the um, engine control module inside the, the block that went into the um, cab where the, da where the uh, dash cluster goes. Um, and they basically just had, uh, I think, four or five wires. There were two wires for the OBU2, and there was one negative, one ignition on, and one ignition hot, I believe, yes. So, and that was basically all, all we needed to fire the engine. Um, so we got that all, all in and everything, and it worked very well. Um, so, like, the only uh, issues I'm having now with it is the... I can't really get my clutch to work right because the ECMs are so different. Um, so the only the body control clutch, the body control gauge is like the uh, fuel, the battery, and the I forget and the speed work, but the uh, the RPM, the oil temp, I mean the, the oil pressure and the engine coolant temp don't work. And I'm still trying to get that figured out, but right now I'm just using that as CPS too. Um, so yeah, that was basically the main hurdle was to get that, and then. Um, I mean, it's running and driving truck now, so I just drive around and play with it, basically. <laughs> now, when you had the the six seven out, did you do anything with the bottom end of it, or were you just making sure everything was you know good to go, no cracks in the head, or you know any crazy things? So the motor in the truck is completely stock. There's it's a stock head, stock cam, stock bottom end. I mean, there's nothing internally done to the motor. Um, it has Manton uh, push rods and it has Manton valve springs. That's it. It has head studs, of course. I mean, it has the cheap AR ARP 2000s. Um, but like I said, the the, the motor is completely bone stock, and I don't know. I mean, I don't owe that bottom end of dime because that's really it's it's really taken a pretty big beating over the last two years, so for sure. <laughs> I was going to ask you, as I saw on your Instagram, it was running was it 1077 in the yeah, quarter. So, yeah. So uh, I think 2017, the fastest I went was 12.6, um, and I got it back together for. 2018 over the over the winter of 2017 going to 2018 I pulled the head back off of it because um, I, I I felt like I had a had a um, head gasket issue pulled it off of it um, and then I put a uh, a new chromatic MLX gasket in it and then I put a new uh, new set of ARP 2000 headsets in it um, and that was basically it I mean I just did a little overhaul you know the valves and whatnot but um, and then I uh, freshened up my transmission a little bit and then um, I ran out I came out the beginning of 2019, I'm sorry, 2018, um, and I think I ran like 11.6 at one, it was 117, I believe, maybe it was a little little, little, little slower, um, and then I progressed at 11.21 at 122, and then um, I was really wanting to hit that 10-second 10, that 10 mark, but I couldn't really get it, get it to figure out, so I uh, I said, you know, screw it, I went to Summit, bought a Nitro Stacker 2 kit on it, put that on it, and I think with a 62 jet i ran the 1077 at 129 at so that would be like 6500 pounds at 1077 i think it came out to like uh 1028 or 1032 horsepower i forget exactly that's that's pretty stout i mean for that's a stock <laughs> as far as the rotating assembly and bottom end and everything for a stock stock six seven that's that's doing pretty well yeah I've, i i i i heard the six seven rods they don't like uh horsepower as much as the five nines do but that's why i i stay with a big single to keep that keep that rp the uh the, the low, low torque out of it so i don't mean i could have put count compounds on it but i just said you know screw it I'm gonna stay with this uh the big single and live with it from there and i mean i love it so far um this one i actually tore the uh the five blade and i got a um forced inductions uh s485 96 with 115 housing on a t6 I went with a, with a speed speed uh, T6 comp manifold with a wastegate. So um, it should be a little faster this year, hopefully. Um, I pulled a, pull a little more weight out of it, pulled the seats out. I didn't completely 
completely got the interior, but um, it's uh, carpet still in there, headline still in there, dash still in there, and then I have two Kirkies in it, and I want to build a roll cage in the next coming weeks. So it should be hopefully a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> and for the guys out there that have second gens that are probably, I think they come up to the kind of crossroads you did. You know, am I going to P-pump this, um, or do I want to go common rail swap? What would you say, what would you tell them before, you know, they, they make the decision as far as your experience going the six, seven route, would you encourage them to do it? Would you say, Hey, you know, maybe think about this or that, or, or try, you know, these are some issues I ran into. Think about these beforehand. Um, the only thing I got to say is like, so if you're looking for, if you're looking for drive or if you're looking for, for a play truck, um, P pumping it isn't. It, it, you can drive. You can drive a P pump twenty four hour. Don't get me wrong, but a P pump big horsepower truck is it's 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 drivable, but it's gonna be a little dirty. Um, that's why I went like with the common rail, and I just like uh, you know getting tunes and going to the track, and that's it. I don't have to pump. With, I don't have to mess with you know timing or fuel or anything. I just you know get the tune and uh, run it in, and that's fine. You know, and um, I'd actually uh, me and my brother. Um, we did the work ourselves. He has a dealer shop more. He's a performance in Warren, Ohio. And me and him did all the work, basically. Me and my, him and my dad. Uh, my dad did most of the electronic work on it. But, um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely look at your options if you're, if you're more looking for a play truck or a uh, street truck or, you know, whatever your needs are um, and, and just go accordingly to that. Um, and like, the, like I said, the biggest challenges so far with this motor and this platform is the gauges. I mean, everything else works fine with the, uh, you have to change a couple power steering lines, but like I, other than that, it, everything pulled up very fair, uh, fairly well. Um, I mean, it, it all went back in just the way it came out. <laughs> <laughs> How would you compare the 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 spool up time? Say that's six seven, and it's a seventy five millimeter that you got, right? Uh, yes, I, yes. Last last year I had a seventy five. I have an eighty five on now. Okay. How would you How would you compare? Say the seventy five on that six seven to the 24 valve with either one of the chargers that you ran as far as response oh it's a it's 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 a night and day difference like like no other i tell you i just this uh these con rails are so they're so street friendly with with big horsepower it's not even funny i just that's that you can throw a 75 on there i i have a lucian converter i have a, a 2200 stall suncoast converter and it's still it's still even with the 1800 stall it, it's still lit up perfectly fine going on the road that 24 valve really it, it, it hit its life. I had that 474 on there, and actually I tried to uh, use a uh, a BD, BD diesel. Um, um, the crap, I forget the name of it, but it's the, basically just the uh, the I'm sorry, I'm, it's full valve. That's what it was, full valve. I tried using that, and it wor- it worked quite a bit. Um, still wasn't very street friendly, so that's why I said screw it. I put the 369 for now, and then I'm just gonna go come around the wintertime, and that's eventually what I did. Well, like it's, it's like I said, it's night and day difference. There's nothing in comparison to it. I was going to ask you about the stall speed on the converters. We get a lot of questions from um, whether they're five nine or six seven guys. Like, hey, I'm, I want to run this charger. Um, you know, what kind of what kind of stall speed should I run? Or, you know, is this too low or is this too high? How was the eighteen hundred for you? For the four seventy five, it was it was okay. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's pulled, it's it's pulled okay. Um, at, at the line on the track, I didn't like it very much, but it, it eventually, it, it eventually got there. Um, now then I went to the, so that was an 1800 stall, I think TCS triple disc billet. Um, then I went to a DPC 2300 and, uh, that was it. Like I said, it was a night and day difference. Ran that for a while. And then actually, so actually the, uh, Converter that's in it, it's a Suncoast triple disc converter. Actually, I wanted a raffle. So, uh, a real good friend of mine, Galen Hofstetler, has a set of 75 GNA diesel. And I went down there for a dinner today, and I seen he was having a raffle for a triple disc. And I was like, well, crap, I'll just throw it in there, you know. So, I took a couple <laughs> tickets in there. And then my name gets wrong. And I was like, sweet, I got, a, I got a new converter. So, I was like, so is this just a stock replacement? He's like, no, I mean, it's whatever you want. I'm like, really? I was like, what about a 2200 saw triple disc? Uh, convert. He's like, yeah, cool. So a couple weeks later, I had it at my door, put it in, and it, like I said, ever since then, it's been it's been running great. It's been running amazing. That's cool, and I think it's also one of the hardest parts for us diesel truck enthusiasts to figure out, especially like the first time if you if you haven't done a custom converter or changed the stall speed on it. Like I ran into that myself. Like I threw a big single on a six seven with like a sixteen hundred stall, and I'm like, this is too low. 
And then it's like, all right, I got to go go 18. I think I settled around 2,000. It, it's so, funny because, like, I was younger and I had that 24 valve. And uh, I think I was still in high school at this point, but I put a, a board warner box charger S three sixty six on it, and it just it would not spoil to save its life. It just it won't get out of its own way. It smoked and smoked for days. And I asked come on past a couple of my buddies. And I'm like, hey, what can I do? I was like, different fuel changes, different uh, tuner, nitrous. He's like, dude, stall speed. And I was like, really? And I was at the, at that age, I was still young. Um, and I really just I was like, all right, well, I'll just push it aside for now, and I'll deal with it when I want to get to it. And that's when it started to uh, progressively get get larger, and the the um, restoration came around. And that's when I was like, "Well, I have it apart now, so I might as well put it in stall in it." <laughs> so that's when it, it finally the take all came abroad right there. It was it was really interesting. I did an episode with uh, Terry, who owns Precision Converters, and we were talking about just that, like how do you choose your stall speed? And they do a free restall. So if you buy one of their triple discs, it's it's a free restall to you and i'm like i wish i would have known about this a long time ago because oh, i go sure. like 16 1800 2000 and you know you're having to pull it out and send it and all that kind of stuff but yeah. it, it can and especially as your setups change like the turbo you're with that you're running now you know you you've probably dialed in or know exactly what stall speed you want but as you change turbos and fueling and all that stuff it, it's crazy how much the converter plays in that and even like the transmission tuning you mentioned the the uh, Firepunk Anteater um, software is like what you can do with the transmission and your shift points and all that to really get that turbo to to light and, and perform and cut down your track times too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, um, every I think every single track event last year I was at, I was I was always playing with the tuning. I, I mean, I have a pretty good grasp on it. I mean, it's it's very it's very user friendly. Don't get me wrong, but I still have a couple you know um, ups and downs with it and. I think I finally got it, got it, uh, got it attacked in very well. But for the, for the first couple of track events there, I was clueless on how to do it. I was just throwing random numbers in there and trying to make stuff work. And it eventually got to where I wanted to, and it just it just keeps getting better for sure, for sure. Uh, that that anti it, it is it is definitely a nice product for sure. And for this year for racing, where what are some events you plan on going to? So actually, I think I'm like I said, I'm, I'm located in Ohio, um, so I'm. I'm, I'm going to try to make it to the uh, the uh, ODSS event down in uh, Xenia, Ohio, that Firepunk's putting on, the Revenge event, um, if my, my schedule allows it, of course. Uh, I might try to make it to Rudy's next month, but I'm not 100% sure if my truck's going to be done in time. Um, and then hopefully just try, try to make some, most of the uh, 670 events, the ODS, ODSS events in, 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 on the East Coast, for sure. Um, but, I mean, it, it all comes down to my schedule, for sure. That, that's that's the, uh, the, the deciding factor. I think the, the King of the Street Challenge is in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually it's in West Salem, Ohio, at Dragway 42, which is about an hour from my shop. And uh, actually, I think our brother's uh, sponsoring it. And I'm, I'm actually I'm contemplating entering it. The only thing that is holding me back is so like I don't think anyone understands Ohio weather. Um, <laughs> it could it could it could snow one day. Actually, a couple weeks ago. There was a tornado one day, it was sunny the next day, and there was a blizzard the next day. And it's just, Ohio weather is the most unpredictable <laughs> thing in the world. So that's another thing. It's in November. Um, there's sometimes it's 70 and great in November, and the last couple of years it's been rainy and snowy. So it's going to be a big deciding factor. Um, but I'll probably still enter just uh, since it's so close, and I'll probably never have that chance again. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably hopefully going to enter that in the next couple of weeks before hopefully before yeah, the, the spots fill up for sure. You know, for our listeners out there that are gonna, they're going to want to see your truck, I'm sure, and and follow it and see you know some of the updates you're doing with it. Where can they find you on Instagram? Uh, my my uh, username is uh, Jimmy J I M M I E underscore uh, J Star Fab, um, and that's uh, that. And then I have a Facebook. I, I have a Twitter, but I don't get, get on there very much. Um, I have a Facebook, Jimmy McFalls, that you can find me on, and I basically post most of the progress of my truck on on Instagram for everyone to see so that's basically the, only, the best way to, to see it is on instagram i think it's a, it's a really cool setup that you got and i it seems like it's gaining more in popularity over the last couple of years where you can find six seven motors you know and, and then be able to i think take advantage of the tuning and what they can do with single chargers that it, it's getting to be a more popular swap and yeah for sure for sure i, I think it's a great swap and it's a great opportunity to someone to make power for sure We'll definitely keep us updated on it, and we're going to be covering a lot of the ODSS races this year, and um, 
the king of the street challenge and and things like that so we look forward to seeing what you what you do and then let us know about the uh the gauge cluster when you get that figured out and come back on tell us how how you got all that dialed in and and uh yeah it was really cool to chat with you and and see what you thought of the turbo setups and the engine and the swap and you know the stall speeds and, and everything like that and i encourage everyone to go check out your instagram page it's a you got a, a really cool build and, and a lot of good information there for sure yeah there's a lot of progress over the last couple of years on there so everyone's more than welcome to go look at it and give me their opinion if they like it, if it or if they don't it doesn't matter to me <laughs> <laughs> thanks again for uh for coming on and, and talking about your build with us awesome thanks Pat. i appreciate it don't forget diesel fans make sure and head on over to alligatorperformance.com they've got some spring tax time sales going on right now Save some money on turbo, electronics, and tons of other parts that you're going to want for your truck, whether you're going to be racing or it's going to be camping season and going on vacations, things like that. Get your truck running the way you want. Till next time, keep the shiny side up.